Let me start sharing my screen. Can you all see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Good. Perfect. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us today for a fun and interactive hands-on session where, where we are going to use machine learning and sensors from your own mobile devices and turn your mobile devices into smart fitness tracker. I am Shruti Karulkar. I am Quality Engineering Manager at MathWorks, and today I am thrilled to be talking about sensors. Over to you, Lou. Hello, and I hope everyone can hear me. If you can't, please let me know. So my name is Lou Bear Walker Hannon. Please call me Lou. I'm a Senior Application Engineer. I work with customers that implement AI, and I'm going to highlight information about the Internet of Things. And over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Lou. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sarah Mohammed, and I am a software engineer working on deep learning interoperability. So we'll be talking to you all today about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Thank you, Lou and Sarah. So let's get started. So today you have come to this session to learn more about sensors, AI and IoT. We will use the idea of a fitness tracker to help tie all these concepts together and build an application of our own. So have you thought, how can we build this application? What all are the technical pieces that would be required for doing this? First, we need to measure movement to build a fitness tracker. That's how we would be counting the number of steps that we would be taking. And to measure movement, we are going to require some sensors. Now, all our mobile devices have lots and lots of sensors in them. One, we are going to use one such sensor. This sensor is going to provide input data for our application. Next, what are we going to do with the sensor data that we have collected? We want to apply artificial intelligence to this data to classify something. For those of you who might be using Fitbit or Apple Watch, you uh, might have used uh, them uh, in such a way where you know how much were you active for during your entire workout time? How long were you walking? And how long were you running? We are going to implement just that. We are going to use a machine learning model to classify our activity. And lastly, what are we going to do with all this information? In our respect to this fitness tracker example, you might think you might want to get some notification that you have been sitting for too long. Or you might want to do a fitness challenge with a friend to see who is more active. And IoT is the thing that is going to make all these applications happen. So let's get started on this fitness tracker journey. Let me talk a little bit about our agenda for today. We are going to first learn some concepts about sensors and do our first exercise in which we are going to convert our mobile device into a step counter. Like Fitbit, it is going to count the number of steps that we take. And remember, I'm using the word mobile device the reason is you can either use your phones or tablets for doing this exercise or any of these exercises for that matter. In the next section, we are then going to learn some key concepts of machine learning and do our second exercise where we are going to classify our activities and determine how long do we walk, do we run, or do we just idle, stand, doing nothing. And we are going to learn all of this together. In the third section, we are going to demystify IoT or Internet of Things. We are going to see what is this all buzz about. So now 
I want to talk about the technologies that we are going to use today for our hands-on exercises. To implement AI, we are going to use MATLAB. To access sensors in our mobile devices, we are going to use an app which is called as MATLAB Mobile. This app is available on both Android and iOS. And for learning about IoT, we are going to use ThingSpeak. ThingSpeak is an open IoT platform with MATLAB analytics. So next, I am going to hand it over to Lou to talk about pre-work. We have a very short pre-work for you, which is going to help you start it with all these technologies. And who is going to walk uh, with you, what are the different steps that will help you get started? Over to you, Lou. Thank you very much, Shruti. And as Shruti pointed out, we're going to just do a few steps to help us hopefully go through the pre-work. So with that idea in mind, I'm going to share my screen. Now, if you're looking in the chat, my colleague Bonita, who's another math worker, shared a link with you. And please visit that link. It should bring you to the PDF for the pre-work. I'm going to share my screen to show that PDF as well. Give me one second. And just to check in, can you verify any of my colleagues if you can see my screen, which should have the PDF document open. I think you can. Okay. Great, thank you, Shruti. So as a part of this pre-work document, you'll notice there are several parts. One of the biggest items that I'd like to point out upfront is there are two items you should explore using. Number one, if you have access to a laptop or desktop machine, we encourage you to do parts one and two on that laptop or desktop. However, part three. Part three entails us moving and using a mobile device. And the mobile device that I have in my case happens to be my phone. And the reason for the mobile device is because for the exercises, we're going to be using MATLAB mobile. So let's actually get started. And I'm getting started by using my own laptop. So as a part of getting started, if you've opened up the PDF document, I'm going to make an assumption that a number of us may not have the MATLAB mobile app. So we're going to skip the step that says set up for the Pocket AI and IoT workshop related to this part. And I'm moving instead to part number one. In part number one, we invite you to get access to MATLAB online. In order to get access to MATLAB online and activate this workshop license, you do need to create a MathWorks account. So for many of us, once you select either of the two links, the tiny URL or this longer link, you will be prompted to create a MathWorks account. That should be a very short process. In my case, I'm going to select this link and I have the following tab available. Once you select that link, notice it says the course name, Pocket AI and IoT Workshop for WIDS SEPT 2021. And it has the starting date and the ending date when the license is going to expire. Because I have a MathWorks account, I'm going to type in my recognized email address. If you do not have one, there is the option to create one. So for me, I'm going to type in my email address. Mine happens to be tied to my MathWorks account. Now, the next step, I think probably maybe a tough step, depending on what you're doing, is remembering that password that you have set up for your account. And I'll just sign in. Just to show what should happen once you're able to sign in. Once you're able to sign in, you should see this screen and you should be able to select this Access MATLAB Online button. The Access MATLAB Online button, it brings you to a similar looking screen. And what you need to do next is select Open MATLAB Online. The reason why you're doing this is to verify that you can get access to MATLAB Online. By the way, what is MATLAB Online? It's us being able to use the capabilities of MATLAB through a web browser. MATLAB is an overall analysis tool and programming language. So just to take a step back and highlight, that was just selecting the link to get access to MATLAB Online. So that's one part for the pre-work. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us via the chat. I'm going to sign out of MATLAB Online just to show you one 
more piece of that pre-work. Part two in the pre-work entails getting access to the exercise files. Once again, as a reminder, try to do this step on your laptop or desktops, just so you can have a larger screen to verify that you have access to these files. In part two, you can either use the tiny URL or we could select the longer URL. I'm selecting the longer URL. Once you select either of the two URLs for part two, you should be able to see the following screen where it should bring you to MATLAB Drive. MATLAB Drive is going to give us access to the files for this exercise, for the series of exercises, for the workshop. If you look closely at my screen, you'll see, in my case, I have sharing preview, and there's a menu that says add to my files. If you look in the instructions in part two, we'll highlight selecting this downward arrow and you have a few options to select. Please follow the instructions that are provided in the pre-work in terms of these next steps. I just wanted to show you at least what the screen looked like. Once you can verify that you have access to MATLAB online and these exercise files, I encourage you to go through the steps for part three. Now for part three, once again, we do want you to use a mobile device and connect to MATLAB mobile on that mobile device. So the first part is making certain you have a MathWorks account, go to MATLAB online, get access to the exercise files. And then once you go onto your mobile device, visit MATLAB mobile and follow the steps in part three, just to go through these steps. So with that idea in mind, I'm going to look at the chat for a second. Okay, so just to double check, if you have any questions, please put your questions in the chat. Thank you. And there was a request to repeat part two. Part two is the following. So I'm going back to the pre-work instructions and for part two to access the exercise files, what we're going to do is I'm selecting the link that's provided. Either of the two links should work. Notice you should see that you're in MATLAB Drive. And once you're in MATLAB Drive, I see that Pocket AI and IoT folder, and there's a button, Add to My Files. You can select the downward arrow, and the instructions in the pre-work ask us to select Copy Folder. So, if you can copy folder and you'll have a copy of those files that you can get access to. I hope that answers the question. And with that in mind, if you are not set up at this time, don't worry. We're going to also reach out to you during the first exercise and the other exercise. Thank you for your time. And one small note from my colleague, Sarah B. If the tiny URLs are not working, then use the longer URL and vice versa. If the longer URL is not working, use the tiny URL. Thank you. And I'll hand this back over to my colleague, Shruti, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Can you all see my screen okay again? Okay, perfect. So thank you, Lou, for showing us how to do the pre-work. So let's start with our first topic for today, which is sensors. And I want to start by telling you this. Sensors are all around us. Sensors are everywhere. A sensor is a device which detects a physical property like temperature, humidity, et cetera, and responds to it. Now let's look at some examples of devices that have sensors in them. Smart fitness trackers, like the one we are going to build today. Here uh, you see um, a Fitbit. Any virtual reality device like Oculus Rift or an example of wearable tech. The baby here is wearing something called as an owlet sock. This sock has sensors in it that monitors the baby's blood oxygen level and heart rate. 
Now this sensor data is then sent to a mobile app, which the parents can use to track the health of the baby. Now I have a trivia question for all of you. All these different devices that we saw, all these devices have one sensor common in them. Can you guess what that sensor is? Let us know via the chat window. What is the common sensor in all these devices? Okay, I'll tell the answer and the answer is accelerometer. And this is also the sensor that we are going to use today to build our fitness tracker. Now let's see, what, what is this accelerometer and what does it do? An accelerometer detects acceleration, vibration, and tilt along the three axes. It determines how fast we are moving in any linear direction. Now, this sensor is there in our mobile devices. I am going to tell you two applications that you have been using of this sensor in your day-to-day -day lives. This is the sensor that helps us determine whether we are holding our mobile device in landscape or portrait mode. This is also the sensor that helps us determine whether we are holding our device facing upwards or downwards. In many smart phones, we know that when I'm holding the phone upwards and take it close to my ear, the dial tone or the ringtone starts. And accelerometer is the sensor that helps us make this happen. So, okay. Let's talk a little bit about our exercise one, but you don't need your mobile phones just yet. I want to set the goal for our exercise one. In our exercise one, we are going to uh, turn our mobile devices into step counters. How are you going to do this? You are going to enable the accelerometer sensor in your phone and acquire the sensor data as you walk around the room. We will then do some data analysis on the acquired data to count the number of steps you took as you walked. This is what we are going to do as part of exercise one. Before we start doing our exercises, I want to take a minute to talk about MATLAB Mobile. We are going to use this MATLAB Mobile app to access our sensor. Once you open this app, it should look like something like this. This is an app that is available on both Android and iOS on versions that you can see on the screen. Once you go to the sensors page, you should be able to locate the accelerometer sensor. We are going to turn that on because we want to collect data from this sensor. Now, MATLAB Mobile is an easy app to navigate. We are going to see a short video that will help us walk through this app. So let me play this video. Okay, so once you log into the app, use the hamburger menu to see the different options. First, select the sensors option by clicking it. Then go to the first option, which is stream two and click on it. Once you do that, you will see two options, log and MATLAB. Select the second option, which is MATLAB, because we want to log all the sensor data into MATLAB, because that's where we are going to do the analysis. Next, click on the More tab, and then Enable Sensors. Doing so is important because we want to allow collecting sensor data for our MATLAB mobile app. Next, go back. Uh, to the files menu. Once you go there, you should be able to see a folder named Pocket AI and IoT. You will see this folder after doing the pre-work. Then you can select any of the exercise files and see the code that we have written for these exercises that we are going to do today. You can scroll up and down to read and follow the code. You can use the breadcrumbs on the top to navigate the folder structure. So this is a simple and easy app to follow. If you run into any issues, if you have any questions, 
please do not hesitate to ask questions via the chat window. We would be happy to answer. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about the code that is going to help us achieve the goal for our exercise one. And here, I want to set your expectations. We have just 45 minutes and we have a big application to build. So we won't be able to write all the code from scratch. Hence, we have the exercise files ready for you with very well documented code that will help you follow along. Right now, I want to give you overview of the code that we have used. Now this file collect data is our helper function. You don't have to run it. I just want to show you how we are going to collect the sensor data. We will begin by creating an object called mobile dev, which will help us create a connection to the mobile device that is running the MATLAB mobile app. Next, we are going to enable the accelerometer sensor because we want to collect this sensor data. Next, let's look at the code that is being used for our first exercise. We begin by acquiring the sensor data. And to do this, we are going to use a function named Excel log. Next, we are going to do some data analysis on the acquired sensor data. I'm not going to go into details of this because that's not our goal for today. Next, what we are going to do is find the peaks in the acquired sensor data. Now, every peak in the sensor data corresponds to a step that we take. Hence, we are count, going to count the number of peaks in the data. Total number of peaks in the data are equivalent to number of steps that you take while doing this exercise. When I did this exercise, I walked for 20 seconds. And in those 20 seconds, I took 45 steps. So that's the step count that you will see on your screen. In the bottom right corner, you will see a plot. Click on this plot. This should show you the sensor data. The red triangles that you see, those are the peaks in the data and every peak corresponds to a step that you are taking. Now, let's see how you are going to execute this code. Go to Matla Mobile app. Open uh, the app and go to the file browser. Open the file named exercise one count step and press the run button. After doing so, wait for the prompt to start walking. You will see a downtime counter, a countdown of five, four, three, two, one. And once uh, one, you start walking and walk for 20 seconds. A quick note here, you don't have to count 20 seconds. The program is going to do that for you. A pro tip, hold your mobile device in your hand as you typically do while walking. Right, you don't have to look at the phone, hold it as you normally do and walk. This is going to help give you more accurate results. At the end of 20 seconds, view uh, your step count. We are going to take three minutes to run this code. Uh, if you have any questions as you run this exercise, please let us know via the chat window. It is 12.10 Eastern time. Let's regroup at 12.13. Let's get started.
Okay, we have one more minute to do this exercise. Were you able to run this exercise? Let us know via the chat window. How many steps did you take while doing this exercise? We want to hear from you. This is a fun workshop, typically in virtual meetings, all of us are sitting, uh, listening to talks. This is a workshop where you actually get to move around and walk and run while learning something new. It's fun. Okay, so it's 12.13, let's regroup. For those of you who were able to run the exercise, do you think your results were accurate? If they weren't accurate, what, what do you think? Why weren't they accurate? What can you do to improve the accuracy of the algorithm? These are good questions and keep thinking along these lines. If you have um, any questions, reach out to us via chat window and we would be happy to continue this discussion. Are there any other sensors that you would be interested in working with? Let us know that as well. And if you build any new application using any other sensors, do let us know. We would love to hear from you. And with this, I now hand it over to my colleague, Sarah, for the next section, which is artificial intelligence. Over to you, Sarah. Thank you, Shruti. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, hopefully that's visible to you all now. Um, so let's go ahead and revisit the roadmap for building our fitness tracker. In that last exercise, you learned about collecting sensor data and analyzing it to get useful information like the number of steps that you've taken. But we told you that you would make this fitness tracker smart. So next we're gonna incorporate artificial intelligence uh, or AI to allow this fitness tracker to make some interesting guesses about what activities you're doing. So most of us have probably heard of the term AI before because it's become a component in lots of different types of systems from your smart speakers, uh, which listen and interpret audio signals uh, into language to your cars, which have you know, smart and automated driving tech in newer, uh, newer models. And even your thermostat, you know, which um, can modulate the heating and cooling system in your home in response to the environment. And AI is all about making machines behave in what appears to be an intelligent way. But it's just one piece of a system, like a fitness tracker would be a system that makes it smart. And today, uh, even though there's a lot of buzz around this term, and you might have heard of some different types of AI, like natural language processing in your smart uh, speakers or computer vision in your car, uh, we're going to think about AI as being uh, an umbrella term that encapsulates many different techniques. And the one technique that we're going to focus on today is called machine learning. So in machine learning, our goal is to build a model to accomplish some task. So we can look at that model as being a black box first, something that simply has some inputs and some outputs. Let's say our task today, like in our next exercise, is to classify what activity someone is performing. And we will want to you know, figure out how we would use a model to accomplish that task. So we start with some data, like the accelerometer data that you collected uh, in step one, or in that last exercise. And we give that data to our model and it spits out a label, like walking or standing still. To understand how we created the model that can accomplish that task to classify activity, we have to open that black box a little bit and talk about training. So let's remember that the raw accelerometer data that you collected in the last exercise had three components, right? X, Y, and Z, representing a vector in, in 3D space. Instead of feeding that raw accelerometer data directly into our model, we'll perform a step called feature extraction. 
And feature extraction is about transforming uh, or selecting pieces of the data that we think are going to help the model accomplish its task well, things that the model needs in order to be able to learn the task. So you might not want to give raw data directly to the model to train it. Maybe instead you would apply some statistical methods to it first. Uh, for example, you might want to normalize it so that the values all fall within the same range. Uh, or perhaps you might want to you know, process um, your data in you know, five second intervals to see what changed uh, across the window. You know, did you move up? Did you move left or right? And so the extracted features are what we're going to give to the machine learning model uh, to use it to train. And there are many different types of training algorithms that you can use, including things like um, decision trees um, or uh, k-nearest neighbors or support vector machines. But the one we're going to use today is called nearest neighbors, and it's one of the simpler algorithms that we can choose. So you'll learn a little bit more about that in the next exercise. But these are all different types of supervised machine learning. And supervised just means that the training algorithm requires both of the features from the data as well as the labels for the data. So for each data point, uh, we need to tell our training algorithm what activity uh, is classified for that, for that data point. So we're going to use k-nearest neighbors. And uh, for those who haven't used k-nearest neighbors before, let's talk a little bit more about what that algorithm does. So in this diagram, let's say that the smiley face here is our query point. Um, k-nearest neighbors is all about finding the k-closest points to some query point. And you can choose different ways of measuring that closeness using different distance metrics. So k just refers to the number of neighbors that you're comparing a new data point to to determine how to classify it. So if that smiley face is our query point, and let's say we're looking at k equals three nearest neighbors, and using just Euclidean distance as the distance metric, you can see that the two red walking icons and the one um, standing still icon are the three nearest neighbors. And since the majority of the neighbors to that new query point are walking, then you would just classify the new query point as walking as well. And so it's a very simple approach. And that's the approach that we're going to use in the next exercise to classify activity using accelerometer data. So now that you've learned a little bit more about the technique we're going to use, you're going to apply it to the fitness tracker. As a reminder, in exercise one, you learned about how to capture the accelerometer data from your phone. And you demonstrated one way of analyzing the data to count the number of steps that you had taken. So next, let's get started in exercise two, where you will collect some new data from your accelerometer and then apply machine learning k-nearest neighbors to predict whether you are walking or running or standing idle. So let's walk through the main parts of the code together. So you should be looking at a file called ex2 classify activity. So the first step is that you're going to grab some data that we've already collected and use it to fit a k-nearest neighbor, neighbors model. So the number of neighbors we'll use today is 10. So you can see in the code, we're setting k equals 10 in the model. And then next, we'll extract some features from the raw accelerometer data. And if you'd like to see exactly what features we're extracting, um, feel free to take a look at that helper file called extract features in the helper folder. And then once we have our features, uh, we pass that to the predict method uh, of our k-nearest neighbors model to classify the activity that you're performing and give uh, a probability score of how confident basically the model is in the label that are designed. So after you run this exercise, you'll see a plot with a breakdown of the activities over time. So remember that you'll need to click on that plot icon in the lower right corner of the screen to um, expand it and take a look. But here's an example of what that plot will look like. You can see the activities that you were doing across time, where time steps are across the x-axis. And you'll see you know, about three horizontal lines corresponding to the three different activities that can be predicted, which are running, walking, or standing idle. And you'll see a dot for, on the plot for each time uh, step at which you were doing each of the three activities. All right, so let's go ahead and open up that file, Exercise 2, Classify Activity in MATLAB Mobile, and press the Run button. 
So move around for about 30 seconds um, and then take a look at the plot. And you might have the chance to run this code a few different times, um, but let us know in the chat how the activities are going and if you need any help to get up and running. So we'll take three minutes for this next exercise. It is currently 12.22 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so we'll talk again at 12.25 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. All right, everyone, hopefully you had uh, the chance to try running this activity. So let's go ahead and regroup. Um, let us know in the chat window how the results were for you. Did the model generally do well at classifying the different activities that you were performing? Um, did it tend to do better for some activities versus others? Um, and if so, maybe this is something that you could try um, adjusting the code to try and see if you can get better results. So remember, there are some hyperparameters of our model that you might think about adjusting. So things like the number of neighbors, um, but potentially you could consider trying a different type of model to see if that would give you better results as well. I mentioned a couple of different approaches in the previous slides, um, and perhaps you could get better results that way. So let us know what the results looked like. Um, and if you do try to adjust any of um, those settings in the code to try and get better results, we'd love to hear about how that works for you. And in this next section, I'm going to hand it over to Louvert, who's going to talk about the third component of the fitness tracker, which is the Internet of Things. Over to you, Lou. Thank you very much, Sarah. And here's what my plan is. So I'll briefly talk about the last topic and show a few slides, but we do just have a few minutes left and we want to make certain we're respectful of the other presenters time. So I'm going to share my screen. And quickly go over this last topic and I'll put the presentation in 
presentation mode, but let me go back. Sorry about that. Oops. Let's see what's going on. So in terms of the last topic, we're highlighting information related to the internet of things. So how can we aggregate our activity in the cloud? So in theory, we have all of us spread throughout different locations and would be interesting to find out how many of us may be walking, running, or doing some other activity. So through the internet of things, also known as IoT, there's a workflow that we could have followed. The workflow entailed these three steps. The first step is to collect data from things, in our case, our mobile devices. The second item is being able to analyze trends. And third, being able to report out to, so, to send some information somewhere. In this case, it could be sending out a message through social media or otherwise. As far as the third exercise goes, we will not have time for the third exercise. However, I invite you, I encourage you to explore this third exercise as a take home learning opportunity after we finish this workshop. But I'll just briefly tell you what the third exercise entails. So it entails using ThingSpeak for implementing IoT. Using IoT, you'll be able to aggregate data using this third and final file named ex3 underscore ThingSpeak underscore fitness. The different parts of the code have you taking data and writing this data to a channel on ThingSpeak and then getting access to the data that was written and visualizing this result, not just of your data, but for everyone during a certain time frame who's writing data to those same channels or accessing data from those channels. At the end, you should be able to see a visualization that points out what activity was done by not just one person, but multiple people. These are the steps for that final exercise. And also you get to check and find out did you get the results that were expected? So try this out with colleagues, try this out with friends. And that should be it. You've cut through the hype and designed a fitness tracker. All of these technologies are helpful for so many different types of analysis. And we're seeing these screenshots here. Thank you so much for attending. We have these on-ramp courses that are tutorials you can visit to explore more of the topics that we covered as a part of the workshop. And thank you on behalf of all of the math workers who are part of today's session. Thank you for attending. We hope you found this informative. You have our contact information on the slide and on social media when you use these hashtags. That's another way of reaching out to us as well. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the WIDS workshops. Thank you.